In the past, I've shown that undervolting your GPU, especially these RTX 30 series GPUs, can be very beneficial to the user in terms of noise and thermals, while more or less retaining the same level of performance. So I thought, why not give the RTX 3070 Ti the same treatment and see how well this card can undervolt. Hey, if you enjoy content like this, drop a like, make sure to subscribe, and smash that bell so you never miss another video. Hey, what is going on guys? Danny here. Welcome back to the channel and I hope you've all been doing well. In this video, we'll be undervolting the RTX 3070 Ti graphics card. Previously, I did a video where I applied a substantial overclock to see if I could get close to an RTX 3080, so if you're interested in that video, link for it will be down in the video description. Now, what we're going to do instead is undervolt the GPU, but this time, I'll be targeting a more aggressive frequency to see if we can at least retain the same performance as stock, if not get a higher performance. Previously, when we undervolted the RTX 3060 Ti, 3080, and 3090, we saw that undervolting provided us significantly lower power under load, lower noise, lower temps, and while we did see a decrease in performance, it wasn't really substantial, and in most cases, the user wouldn't have even noticed the lower performance. An undervolt is what I use to help tame my RTX 3080 in my Cooler Master Q500L, which is notorious for poor thermals. One thing that everyone knows for certain is that when it comes to Ampere, the cards aren't particularly wowing anyone in the efficiency department. The 3070 Ti especially didn't impress me since it was considerably closer to the much faster RTX 3080. However, with how much headroom we've seen from other GPUs, I believe we can fix that. So what I'll be doing is similar to what I did in my 3070 Ti overclocking video. I'll be applying an undervolt using MSI Afterburner, testing out 10 games at 1440p, we'll compare the numbers to see how it affects performance and how it compares to stock, and then we'll finally take a look at power consumption and thermals to see if it was worth it. And spoiler alert, I believe you guys will be pleased with what you see. We use the same test system from the 3070 Ti review which has a Ryzen 7 5800X for the CPU, 32GB of Patriot Viper Steel memory running at 30 600 megahertz, an MSI X570 unified motherboard, a 2 terabyte Samsung 970 EVO Plus NVMe SSD, and a 1000 watt EVGA gold certified power supply. For the undervolt settings, I set the target boost frequency to 1950 megahertz, which is about 100 megahertz higher than the advertised boost at 875 millivolts. So as opposed to last time where we went a bit lower on the voltage but targeted a lower frequency, this should hopefully provide us with the same performance that's, you know, very close to stock. Remember, the way GPU boost works is in accordance with temperatures and power headroom. It allows the GPU to boost beyond that or it might be actually a bit lower. First, we'll take a look at our 3D Mark Times by Extreme graphics benchmark. Here we can see a very minor 2.5% drop in the graphics score, so we're hardly talking about a loss there. Moving on to our games, I'm going to be going through them pretty quickly as the results pretty much speak for themselves. In Shadow of the Tomb Raider, we see a 2 FPS loss for both the average and 1% lows. In Cyberpunk 2077, it's basically the same thing, 2 FPS loss for the average and a 1 FPS difference for the 1% lows. You're hardly going to notice that difference. Forza Horizon 4 shows us a 3% difference for the average frame rate, but we see just slightly better 1% lows, but overall, you'd still retain the same exact buttery smooth experience from before. In Gears 5, we see a 3% difference for the average frame rate, while our 1% lows remain the same. In Horizon Zero Dawn, we see a 4% difference for the average frame rate, while the 1% lows barely drop. And then this pretty much just continues on for the rest of the titles, so I won't bore you guys by narrating each and every game here. As you guys can see for yourselves, the performance impact from this undervolt is completely negligible. We're looking at margin of error results. The gameplay experience the user will have here with this sort of undervolt will be identical to as if they were using the card at stock, and that's excellent. Looking at our 10 game averages tells us exactly what we've been expecting. For the average FPS, we see that our stock configuration is about 3% faster than the undervolt, and the 1% lows were barely impacted. By targeting a more aggressive frequency and just slightly higher voltage, we're able to retain the same stock performance. Now you guys might be wondering, hey that sounds pretty good, but how much power are we really saving here? Is it even worth going through the hassle? Well, during our Time Spy Extreme second graphics test, the RTX 3070 Ti at stock averages around 306 watts of power consumption, which was definitely on the higher side in my opinion. It was pretty close to the 3080, which was on a different level when it came to performance, so that justified the power consumption. And looking at this from a generational standpoint, X70 class cards were unheard of consuming this much power. But now when we undervolted, 
we see a whopping 27% drop in power consumption, where the 3070 Ti consumed just 225 watts on average. That is quite the drop in power usage, and it's using even less power than the stock 3060 Ti. It's pretty crazy to see just how much of a difference we were able to make by just spending a few minutes in MSI Afterburner to tweak this card's performance per watt. If you're an owner of an RTX 3070 Ti, or you know what, any RTX 30 series GPU for that matter, undervolting in my opinion is the way to go. You basically get the same level of performance as you would with stock, but immensely lower your power usage. Do keep in mind though, the effects of undervolting will vary from GPU to GPU, just like with overclocking as there's a silicon lottery, as it comes down to the quality of your chip. So your mileage may vary. Now, lower power consumption isn't the only benefit you'll get from undervolting, but you'll also experience lower temps as well. With this undervolt, we brought down our GPU core temps by 9 degrees on average, which is a very nice drop, and this will allow the GPU to run noticeably quieter as well. Not that it was a problem with this card in particular, but hey, if you've got a noisy GPU, then undervolting to help tame temps and lower noise is definitely a nice way to tackle that problem. To me, this just reiterates the same fact when it comes to Ampere. Nvidia seriously pushed the silicon to its limits, and I said this way back in, in the summer of 2020 when we started to see all the leaks of the RTX 3080 and how it was going to consume around 350 watts of power. Like at that time, it seemed like a surprise because everyone saw it was a pretty big jump from the previous gen. And I said that perhaps with this gen, we'll have to give these Nvidia cards the Radeon treatment, where instead of overclocking, you'll be better off undervolting. And that does indeed look like it's the case. All of the RTX 30 series GPUs that I've played around with benefited greatly from undervolting and show drastic power reductions. So you can add this RTX 3070 Ti to that list when it comes to undervolting. It's just a no-brainer, you guys. I hope you guys found this video to be informative and helpful. Let me know your thoughts down below. Check out the video description on ways to support the channel and for my other videos. If you guys are interested in more content like this, then make sure you subscribe. Thanks for watching, take care, and I'll see you guys in the next one.